Hi folks, well here we are again. Uh, we survived the Hurricane Hillary. I was wondering where she was. I haven't heard about her in quite a while. Anyway, we lost our road, but that doesn't matter. We'll get that sorted out. But anyway, there's a lot of people having a lot of hard times between Hillary and the fires up in Canada and the Northwest. So and Maui, so it's pretty much all over the country. And um, we're just thinking about those folks. So anyway, today what we're gonna do is I wanna show you the new bit that we've come up with, and it's called Pat's Western Bit. It's a real catchy title. We spent months figuring this name out. <laughs> anyway, that's the way, you, if you call, that's what you call it, Pat's Western Bit. So what I wanna first do is show it to you. And this is the bit. And this is a Western riding bit designed to be ridden with one hand. And uh, there's a lot of folks out there that have gone now for a couple generations that got away from riding with one hand. And um, trail riders and cowboys is who we deal with. So for those of you that are coffin cheaters like me, you'll remember these bits. All I did was put together a combination of four bits and came up with this. So this is the slicer. This is what a whole lot of people got, okay? Well, it got to the point where these $60 bits five years ago are now 250 to 300 and some dollars, depending on the bit. So we, uh, I wanna show you first, this is a, this is a typical half-breed slicer bit, okay? First thing you wanna notice is that it's it's a little bit longer. The bit that I came up with is shorter than that bit. I wanted just a little bit less leverage on it because everybody's riding better. And the big deal that we did was to address the width. Now this will be an educational thing for a lot of people because you just put a bit and go, but I want you to notice that this bit is five inches to the inside. Okay. This bit is five and a quarter to the inside. This bit is five and a half to the inside. So what we're gonna offer is a five and a quarter, five and a half, and then we got a six inch wide for the half drafts and big horses. So those are the three sizes that we're gonna offer. Five and a quarter, five and a half, and six, all right. So I'm gonna put the five inch slicer half breed on this horse so you can get a close-up of what the, the sides of the mouth look like with the bit on. This is pie. We want to thank Chris for letting us use pie today for a, for a model. Kind of runs in his family. So this is... I took curb strap and reins off so that you could see The difference and what I want you to notice is right here on a five inch the lips are going past the cheek so that tells me that this is too narrow and this is one of the reasons we've gone on to what we've gone on so please remember what that looks like This is a five and a quarter. And of course we've got the same diameter steel in the mouth as we have in the missing link snaffle. And now if you would look at this, it doesn't go around the cheek. There's more room for the corner of the mouth. And also here, right? And we bent the, like Deb just said, the, the slicer bits don't have a bend to the outside so that the head stall fits. And the ring is small. That's another one of the problems we had with them. So this bit, the ring is plenty big enough for your curb strap and your head stall. And you'll notice that it's bent out to the outside to leave room for the head stall to sit comfortably right here. Now, please notice 
the amount of lip touching the cheek piece. This is a five and a quarter. This is a five and a half. So this is the part that I want you to see right there that this bit when this horse relaxes his mouth you can see more room right here and to me that's the perfect fit for this particular horse. All right so we all know that some of your horses have got a mouth like a gummer cow and others are just a narrow mouth. So now you're gonna have to measure because you can't send us a picture of your horse's head and we figure out how wide the mouth is. You're gonna have to take it on to measure the width. So basically almost all saddle horses are gonna be five and a quarter and five and a half. Now I'll give you an example of how much fun you're going to have. This comes out of the kitchen <laughs> and that goes through the mouth and you hold it the horse relaxes and you mark it with a magic marker on this side right over here when the horse relaxes its mouth which could be tomorrow then you take it out and measure the distance and you'll know. The simplest way to do it is to take a western bit just like a slicer if you have one and measure the inside and decide if it's a perfect fit or if it's too narrow and then you've watched this demonstration so you can figure out a five and a quarter or a five and a half is going to work now the reason I did this is because I'm trying to get the horse as comfortable as they possibly can get without pinching the mouth and this is the problem we ran into some of these were five and inches five and an eighth five and a quarter they even had an arab one that was four and a half so anyway this is the bit this is what it looks like and for those of you that have been riding a missing link snaffle it's the exact same diameter mouthpiece exact same cricket and you can transition to a western bit is my goal so that people can be get back to riding western in a western bit with one hand that's what that's what the goal is here now the chains on the bottom as opposed to the strap I want you to notice that these chains are set up so that when you're roping your lariat doesn't get if it gets hooked over the cheek piece it doesn't go up in there and gets in trouble that's what stops it now the other side is for like trail riders if you were to hang this up on a corral fence when you're riding or whatever happens, it, in your lifetime it's going to happen a minimum of two times I'm guessing. These S hooks are designed that they're going to break loose so you don't tear up your head stall and it's a no brainer to fix them. So this is kind of the something I put on there to make sure that a guy could fix it if, it, if he did hang it up in the corral because everybody that I know has worked in corrals that are very dangerous. So folks, if you want to if you want to order a bit, remember five and a quarter, five and a half, or six. So that's the way it works. Folks, the cost of this bit is three hundred dollars plus postage. Okay, if you want a silver bit, which is another step higher, and pretty much is a leverage bit then you can get a hold of D bar M and Reno at Jack's and he'll get you a silver bit if you want to go high end to an heirloom then you get a hold of Bruce Hainer over in Santa Barbara and he can make you a custom made bit now these bits are all hand finished and I personally check them out and make sure everything's structurally correct so anyway they're a nice bit and I hope you enjoy them and let her rip now remember this is a western bit okay you see the cheek piece and the mouthpiece 
This is cold roll steel. Horses like it. This bit is going to rust. You need to get over that Beijing dipped in chrome deal. And that's what bits do is they rust. You ask your grandpa, he can tell you all about it. So the concho is not going to rust, but it, the horses like this cold roll steel. And the rust doesn't, you don't have to call a vet or go to group or anything. You just ride the bit. Especially you folks that's got humidity, they're going to rust. Then they get, the polite word for rust is patina in case you want to be cool. There we go. So that pretty well takes care of the, the bit. And um, anyway, thank you. And uh, while we're at it, I wanted to mention I was up in North Dakota by Sterling, north of Bismarck, a week or so ago. And I went up there to a ranch and got to ride with some really nice people. And uh, I kind of pride myself in knowing about grazing and the different types of grazing. And I, that's one of my passions. And I got to be surrounded by people that not only understand grazing, but they know a heck of a lot more than I do about the soil and how to bring it back and how to improve. So I was real fortunate to get to be around Josh and oh. Bo and everybody up there. And then the families that came were just top drawer. So I want to thank them for being such great hosts and, and um, how nice it was to go up to North Dakota. Thank you. Thank you.